My name is Nadej Aoki. I'm a PhD candidate at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and MIT. The coral reefs are among the most biodiverse and economically important habitats in the ocean. Um, but over the last 30 years, we've seen um, over 25% of coral reefs vanish and about the remaining 67 or you know percent are on their way to extinction. Um, and in many cases, human activities are a major contributor to um, these threats to coral reef existence. So we've been studying sound on uh, coral reefs in the Caribbean for a number of years now, close to a decade in our lab. Um, and we've noticed that uh, healthier reefs compared to more degraded reefs have these really distinct acoustic signatures. And this is something that we've observed on our reefs and that other people have observed on reefs around the world. And so we um, were interested in what the ecological implications of that are. So we know that there are many fishes, invertebrates, lots of biological sources of sound on reefs and that a lot of other animals use sound as a way to navigate or communicate, and a lot of them uh, use sound during their larval stages, including fishes. Um, and so we were interested in exploring how sound affects settlement and affects uh, juvenile development in an invertebrate that hadn't really had this been studied before, um, including corals, which are, of course, such important contributors to the overall coral reef ecosystem. The process that we used to test this hypothesis was we went to some field sites in the U.S. Virgin Islands in the Caribbean on the island of St. John. And basically the process is you collect some adult corals from the field and we had them spawn in the laboratory and we collected their larvae and those larvae produced by the coral are immediately or almost after a few hours they're ready to go searching on the reef um, and trying to find the um, suitable habitat for them to settle and permanently attach and grow. Um, so we took those larvae, we put them into small uh, containers of water so that we could uh, place them where we wanted. And we put some of them on coral reef where we had an underwater speaker broadcasting uh, healthy reef sounds. And we put some on a degraded reef where there was none of that broadcasted sound and pretty low levels of um, natural sound. And then after a couple of days, we compared uh, whether or not the corals exposed to enriched sound treatments had higher rates of settlement compared to the unenriched sound. On average, we saw um, higher settlement rates of an average of 1.7 times and up to seven times higher settlement on our acoustically enriched environment compared to our controls. Um, and overall, this is a really exciting project because it gives us another tool that we can apply to future restoration efforts and one that we can combine with other restoration practices to try to build more, um, more resilient reefs. So we have so many awesome ideas for the next stages of this research. Um, those include trying to see basically how widespread this effect is, whether or not we can um, apply it to coral reefs around the world. Um, we have a really exciting question of um, whether or not coral reefs have their own dialect. And basically, we're really interested in addressing what the specific sounds that corals are responding to, because now we've shown that they respond to the overall soundscape of a healthy reef. But we're really interested in digging down into the specifics of that in order to be able to use this tool in a more effective and targeted way.